Okay, there you go. That's the way to do it. Those are the muscles. Last time on Adventure Drift, we wrapped up a few projects on Varuna and then got back under sail and headed out to Santa Cruz Island. We found some beautiful landscape while hiking along the island's north coast and even got up close and personal with the island fox. To top it all off, we caught and filleted our very first fish. Hey guys. Hey, good day everyone. Uh, we're talking to you right now from Central California in the middle of like a vineyard I guess. Yeah. But, more about that next time. Yeah more about that next time. In this episode come along join us. We're gonna do some more exploring out on Santa Cruz Island and then go have some adventures in Santa Barbara. Yep. Yeah stay tuned. Waking up at Smuggler's Cove on the eastern end of Santa Cruz Island we had a great view of the island hillside complete with an olive grove that was planted over a hundred years ago. As much as we wanted to go to shore and explore, there was some very large surf and we didn't feel like flipping the dinghy and getting all wet. It's one month today. One month? It's We're celebrating one, a one month. One month cruising anniversary. <laughs> it's the only anniversary we've ever celebrated. U.S. Coast Guard, this is warships. Got two knots of wind. Woo. We have the motor on right now, which sucks. We're hoping to get it. We got the Genoa and the main out. And oh, now the wind's down to 1.7 knots. Yeah, it's pretty pretty glassy right now, but it's early in the morning. Yeah. But we're hoping around this point up here we might get uh, something. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I don't know what this point is. We motored along and eventually found some wind to sail in when we rounded the southeastern corner of the island. in the vicinity of 33. Is that us, Varuna? Sailing vessel Varuna, go ahead. Okay, this should be me on channel 1 1. What did we do wrong? Sailing vessel Varuna. Yes, yeah, this is Singing Channel requesting your course speed and destination. Uh, heading 270 degrees, we're 33 degrees, 57.953 by 119. 39.549. Destination is uh, Anchorage, approximately one nautical mile uh, west of our heading currently. Okay, um, we just want to make you aware that we are conducting not burn exercises. Um, I see that you're kind of far away from it, so um, you, you will be a non-factor as of now. But I just want to make you aware of the pattern. Thank you very much. Uh, we're aware we're listing on uh, 1-6. Roger. The hazard pattern will be going on to 1800 today. Copy that, thank you very much. Uh, this is the sailing vessel Varuna, uh, switching back to 1 6. Over. This is speaking to our standard mount shot at 1 6 and 1 1 out. There you go, AIS helps right there. Yeah. She knew who to call. I was like, they can't be calling us. I <laughs> know. We're right by an island. You can't be getting blown up. It's a national park. I was going to share a little bit about navigation. Um, what came on Varuna was a Raymarine C70 chart plotter. And it's uh, all linked in through SeaTalk. It scoops it's right here like a nice heads up but it uses a lot of power so we try not to use it if we can what we do use is i have the tablet here we have a couple of different things on here We're actually using open cpn uh, which is a really cool um, open source platform for charting and i'm actually running this off a computer down below we have a little mini raspberry pi and it'll stream it to any of our uh, tablets laptops um, phones or whatever just by running a remote desktop. And then I can go on here and I can actually control it. We can view our track and it has all, I've got all the US charts on here, the most recent NOAA charts. It's linked into our AIS on board as well. I have that linked into the Raspberry Pi. So that's one. The other one we use is on the same tablet. I use, we have the Navionics on here as well. I know a lot of people use the Navionics. So that's just a couple of things we use for the navigation. And obviously we do the weather routing and stuff with the reading we can show another time. But works pretty well. We just keep it plugged in up here in the cockpit. Um, and then we have a couple of different backups to uh, an iPad and uh, the laptops if we need to stream it through there for a bigger screen. We sailed along the southern coast, staying well out of the way of the warship. So we're here at Coches Prietos. It's a tiny little beautiful anchorage. So we're gonna set a stern anchor. 
gonna be our first time doing that. So put it in the dinghy and row it over there. So we got the stern anchor out after a couple tries. Trying to figure out how best to do that. Very hot. And another boat just pulled in. We thought we were going to have it to ourselves, but we made room for people, so now they're coming in. Bit of laundry. This is just a container we use uh, to keep most of our cleaning stuff in. <laughs> it's been soaking in here for a while. We've just got uh, like the OxyClean, I think it's called in here. And this is the final freshwater rinse. We have bread going on here. let it rise so this is our washing so our dishwashing is just salt water wash soap and then just heated a couple of saucepans here of uh, salt water and then we rinse salt water off just a little bit of bleach a couple of drops of bleach and fresh water so we don't use too much fresh water salt water off them, it stops the silverware from getting too much rust on it. We use these on board, it's called bees wrap. I think basically it's like a muslin cloth that's been soaked in beeswax I guess. You wash it in cold soapy water and then I'll rinse it and then uh, you can wrap it around like your veggies. So they're pretty good for reusability. Which is why we got them to avoid cleaning up as much as possible. Bloody warships. The next morning, we set off to go do some exploring. This side of the island was very dry, hot, and dusty. As we climbed the valley with little to no shade, we wondered how all these plants stayed so green. A bunch of lizards, dragonflies, and super hot. here. Favorite anchorage so far on Santa Cruz Island in the Channel Islands. This is Coches Prietos, which is, means black pigs. So Santa Cruz used to have, they did a bunch of farming on it for a while in the 1900s and they had rattlesnake problem. So they brought in black pigs to eat all the rattlesnakes. have the anchorage to ourself now. There was one other boat last night. Looks a lot bigger once we're in here, but we're only anchored about, I don't know, 50, 100 feet off the beach, depending on if it's high or low tide. Um, we're kind of right behind a reef there. We came in, we thought it looked tiny. We didn't even think we could fit in here, but it's actually quite a bit of room. And we're about to go for a swim in this nice clear water. It looks awesome. It's 
Fennec is up. I think it's blowing about six and a half, seven knots. And we're cruising. Making four and a half, five knots right now. Dana Kappa right there. So I'm just making up ginger ale this morning. I had the ginger steeping. Steeping. Ginger steeping overnight. I'm just gonna mix it up and let it sit for a few days. So yeah, we've found this a really good way to something a bit different than water, right? Flavor it up. Um, it's pretty easy to use our water, yeast, carry some ginger root, which lasts for a while. Chuck in a bit of lime. The background is Santa Barbara. We uh, came in here just for the night so we could actually upload the latest episode for you guys. But we're heading back to the islands because they're bloody awesome. And we're gonna go out towards Cueva Valdez, how do you say that one? Cueva Valdez, I said it right. Cueva Valdez. It's nice out. Alright, so we're gonna walk through here, setting up Dan. Dan the, Dan the man, the wind vane here. So I'm gonna put the vane on first. Don't know if I have this exactly right yet, but this is how we do it and it works so. In, there's a pin in here which locks it from uh, moving right now until I'm ready. I'm going to drop the rudder here. What I'll do first is I'm going to set my control lines here. Got my two control lines here and the reason we did this was just to create the, the, the shortest path and the path of least resistance. Nice and tight lines is kind of the key here. You want them nice and taut. And I'm going to run them through this, so this is the control which isn't locked in right now. So this just free spins at the moment, and then when we're ready we pop that in to control the wheel. We're on the electronic autopilot right now. Alright, so we're going to run it around here. I want to drop the actual uh, the rudder down there, which will then get the water movement as the paddle moves left to right here. And that's what will actually control the arms. All right, so we're going to drop the paddle arm into the water. Here, I'll show you. I'll take the, the ring off here, and now you can see the vane moving around. We want this leading edge here to point directly into the wind. So that way, whenever we move off the wind, it's going to pull this paddle over like it is now, which is going to turn the rudder down below. As you can see it's trying to turn us here. Putting tension here on the green line, which is actually turning us to port, which it's trying to based on where we're set here. that slowly adjust there with less wind as we get closer into that leading edge. So we get basically a straight angle. Now it's trying to pull us to starboard here. I'm going to go standby here. Very minimal adjustments here. Keeping us into the wind here. The stronger sea conditions. Dan does the same. It doesn't require anything more. Uh, the electronic autopilot uses way more, probably four or five amps. Yeah. Um, so it's just making constant corrections. We made our way straight back out to Santa Cruz, headed for the anchorage of Cueva Valdez, about 20 miles off the coast from Santa Barbara, sailing amongst tons of jumping sea lions and dolphins along the way. Along the northern coastline, the island is made up of volcanic rock. This rock became heavily fractured as the island was uplifted and formed, which created dozens of seep caves along the north coast.
After exploring the caves on shore and seeing the clear water surrounding them, we went out exploring in Makara. Underwater, we found a vibrant world full of life. Kelp with all sorts of large and small fish, rocks covered with mussels, sea anemones, and starfish, and tons of sea lions watching and playing all around us. As we explored all the nooks and crannies of the coastline, we found a very cool little blowhole. Must be from that like kind of hole in there, yeah. Wow, that's cool. Look at that blowhole right there. Uh huh. And of course, Ty decided to row us right up next to it and get us soaking wet with cold, salty yeah. water. After checking out the caves in uh, Cuevo Valdez. Cuevo Valdez. Cuevo Valdez. See, I've got my Spanish down. Uh, we headed back into Santa Barbara, just to take care of a few more errands, get some shopping done, that sort of stuff. Three, four days later ish. Ready? Cheese. Let me get a little shake of the landing a little while. That little spray. <laughs> Four bottles of it. Yay! I'm drink some ginger ale. Yeah. It's early in the morning. We are rowing over to the pier in Santa Barbara to go look for our shoes. <laughs> we are washing our smelly, stinky shoes. As we came back, the tub was halfway knocked over and we're each missing one of our shoes. <laughs> Our nice shoes. We're hoping they washed up on the beach. Okay, so we were walking and we weren't having any luck, but I just spotted my shoe. Pretty confident. That's it right up ahead here. A day later. There she is. I think it smells worse now than before. I think so. I see it! <laughs> Look at right that. There. Look at that. How lucky are we? No. Must be a sign of things to come today. And where is Varuna? Way right next to the pier over there. Right next to the pier over there. So she drifted down a ways. There we go. Mission accomplished. So while we were in Santa Barbara, we had a few adventures, misadventures. We turned to the pier one night where we tied our, our dinghy up right at the pier next to the anchorage to find that Makara was all gone, right? Yeah. It was middle of fiesta or old Spanish days. So there was a lot of uh, rowdy, drunk people in town. So we reckon they took her for a joyride. Yeah, so that was kind of a bummer. We spent the evening working with the harbor patrol and trying to find it, couldn't track anything down. So we couldn't get back to our boat because harbor patrol said they won't take us to our boat because of liability. So we couldn't get to Varuna. We could have swam, but we had a bunch of gear with us. We had cameras, drones, so swimming wasn't really an option. And we ended up finding a kayak on Craigslist, so we bought a kayak. Alright, so here she is. Makara 2.0. We, we Ubered out to go uh, purchase a kayak off Craigslist. Yep. Got a, a paddle. Paddle. And then also a few other <laughs> miscellaneous <Yeah. laughs> bits. Yeah. <laughs> we want to carry more around. So as we were getting some stuff for the kayak, like an extra paddle and so on, we got a call from the harbor patrol. Saying that they had found the dinghy. Somebody brought her in. Yeah, we got her back and then we ended up with a dinghy and a kayak. Figured it wasn't worth giving up all that room and cluttering up the deck. So yeah. we spent a few extra days in Santa Barbara waiting to sell the kayak. So what happened? Our oars broke. What? One oar broke. So we're on our way over to the jetty to tie up the kayak we have that we're trying to sell. Um, hopefully someone in Savo is going to come look at it. So we rode over the kayak to tie it up because we're going to go in and pump out. We were leaving there and then the oar snapped, snapped in two in and half. fell in the water. Yeah, so these are oars. not fixable. Yeah, we need a new oar, but basically oars. It's another thing that broke out of nowhere kind of randomly. It was kind of a weird one to break. Yeah. <laughs> 
Righto, so not going to show this too much to you, but I've got to open up the holding tank. It's right down here under the rebirth. The gauge is not working on it. Um, my hunch is it's probably clogged up. Uh, we ended up probably overfilling uh, the holding tank the other day. Should have known better. We didn't bother to check for some reason. Um, so we, went, we had to go pump out last night, which was a bit of a disaster. Um, exploded all over me from the pressure. Had a bit of a volcano, which was kind of gross. Now I am going to break it open and hope it doesn't smell too bad and make a mess. Ugh. All right, pretty much done. Just for the cleanup now. Uh, that's pretty gross. I pulled the gauge out, had a bunch of scaling on it, kind of soaked it in a little bit of vinegar, kind of played with it and got it to loosen up, broke off some of the gunk and tested it in a little bucket of seawater and then tested it on the gauge. The gauge showed with the seawater in. It's a good thing to check because now I'm just going to give it a bit of a clean down, got a little bit of just fresh water and bleach here, sprayed a little bit of vinegar water on here as well. I'm just going to kind of clean it up a bit. After finally selling the kayak, we enjoyed a beautiful sunset over Santa Barbara, excited to get going and head back out to the islands in the morning. Little did we know what was in store for us out there. And uh, that's about all, right? Yeah, more about that next time. Yeah. So thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate all you guys subscribing. We love you patrons, man. You guys keep us going and help us make these videos awesome. And remember, give us a thumbs up if you like the video, and also leave us a comment down below. We try and read and respond to all of our comments. And we've got lots of other videos, so if you haven't checked them out before, you can check them out right down here. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, guys. From Cheers, California. and see you later. Do the hokey pokey and turn around. That's what you do. You don't do that. I think that's what, I don't know what this means, but I always thought that was what hokey pokey is. Oh, maybe. Yeah, no, 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 you do, but you've got to do this. This is something to do with it. Oh, I'm getting busy. Cuevo cool. Valdez. Cueva. Cueva Valdez, like the cheese. Queso. Captain's Log, day 47. I'm talking to the sea lion. <laughs> Call him over here. Arru, arru. We're looking for uh, book deals. Yes. If anyone else out there has a book deal to shoes that went on a little adventure. Uh-huh. The question I do have today for everyone is, where is Hillary? Yeah. <laughs>